Hi everybody, welcome to another Scratch tutorial in which I'm going to show you how to get your graded content out of Scratch into a DCP. First of all, there's a plugin for Scratch called Media Reactor Workstation and it's actually not that much of an effects plugin, it's more um, an I.O. plugin, so it adds formats that you can import and export from Scratch. And if you buy it with an additional license for EasyDCP, you will be able to create DCPs directly out of Scratch. And you have a couple of other formats that you can read and write to. As you can see, that's, that's actually quite a lot. But if you don't have that plugin and you want to go with a freeware DCP creator, I'm going to show you how to do that. So, in order to create our DCP, we need to do three things to our image. First of all, we need to render it in XYZ color space, because that's a color space a cinema server or a cinema projector expects. Second, we need to export our images in the JPEG 2000 codec, because, well, that's the codec a cinema server expects. And third, we need to wrap all this JPEG 2000 content into an MXF container in order to put it into the uh, DCP folder structure. Now every freeware DCP encoder is capable of accomplishing those three steps. However, in our workflow we will be using Scratch to do the first two steps, the conversion to XYZ and the encoding to JPEG 2000. And here's why. First of all, most of the freeware DCP encoding softwares only offer a checkbox which allows to convert from sRGB or X709 to XYZ and that's as far as the options for color space conversion go with the freeware. In Scratch however we have full control over the color space conversion. We can feed it any kind of footage, any kind of color space like P3 or log images or whatever we want and convert it to XYZ. We can even use the Scratch internal color tools to tweak our look for the digital cinema even further. Second, we are saving time and disk space because we don't need to render a digital cinema delivery master or any other kind of digital intermediate format. Scratch is able to render out a DCI compliant JPEG 2000 image sequence which can be used to create the DCP. Hence, no further re-encode is needed and we can just wrap the JPEG 2000 image sequence into one single MXF file. Next, since Scratch splits the workload to do the color space transform on GPU and the JPEG 2000 encoding on CPU, it really is a much faster encoder than a freeware DCP software. Also, we can load back the rendered JPEG 2000 sequence into Scratch and check the content immediately and in real time. Last but not least, in case we need to add changes to our final piece after we created the DCP, we can do that very easy. Since we are rendering an image sequence out of Scratch, we can easily replace certain portions of that image sequence by just rendering out the range of the changed content and replacing the original image files. All that's left then is to quickly rewrap the DCP instead of re-encoding the complete movie again. Alright, so let's have a look at our project here. We are dealing with a little trailer here for some lumberjack games. and. First of all, I want to make sure that all my clips here are flagged with their correct color space. So I go to the media browser, with the gray tab, and make sure that every clip here is flagged as Rack 709 because that's what those clips actually are. Okay, and that looks good. And next, I'm going to my outputs. So here's my main output node, which basically reflects my timeline. And for that output node, I'm going to set the color space to XYZ. And if the apply button here is active, Scratch will look at each clip and we'll see that it's in Rack 709 color space. We'll look at the output node and see that it's in XYZ color space. So Scratch will do a transform from Rack 709 to XYZ. And that's why it's important to flag the clips here with their correct color space. So Scratch knows from 
where it needs to transform to XYZ. This way, we will get 100% DCI compliant XYZ images out of Scratch. Okay, next we need to render JPEG 2000. Okay, so select that here, switch to RGB. Now let me quickly specify an output folder. Go to the work in progress folder, call it J2K, create folder, and put everything inside there. Now let's just add this to the render queue and fire off that render queue. So while this is rendering, let me show you where all our stuff is going. Here's the work in progress folder, J2K folder, and Scratch now renders an image sequence in the JPEG 2000 format and also in XYZ color space. Okay, Scratch is done with rendering our JPEG 2000 image sequence. Now let's do a quick check on our render to verify the content before it gets wrapped into a single MXF file. Therefore, I'm going to load the just rendered JPEG 2000 sequence back into Scratch. Now, scrubbing through our mini timeline, it looks like we did a good job with encoding our little JPEG 2000 sequence. Now, some of you guys might say, well, why does this clip look like a Rec. 709 clip? If we encoded our JPEG 2000 sequence in XYZ color space, the colors would look different, totally different actually. And well, you're right, uh, those colors actually look different. Um, let me explain. Uh, we don't see this right now because Scratch has a very intelligent color management. Going to the matrix and going to the config menu here, we can see that this clip is flagged as XYZ. Because when we load a JPEG 2000 sequence, Scratch assumes that it is an XYZ color space. If it's in a different color space, we can set it to something else here. Or if we swipe to the right, select the metadata stack, we can do that here. Or in the construct. Now looking at our display settings, we go to settings and monitor menu, we can see that our interface monitor is set to Rec. 709. So now Scratch knows both. First, that the clip is in XYZ color space, but our display is in Rec. 709 color space. So it does a transform from XYZ to Rec. 709, and so displays the XYZ clip correctly on our Rec. 709 display. If I now set this display to XYZ, which it isn't, but just for the fun of it, let's set it to XYZ, and now Scratch will Again, compare the two, the clip, which is XYZ, and the display that is flagged as XYZ, and so we'll not do any conversion or whatsoever for display. And now, as you can see, we can see those greenish, yellowish XYZ colors. All right, let's set it back to Rec. 709 and continue with our little tutorial. So all that's left to do is wrap all those JPEG 2000 files into one single MXF file and have our DCP. So let's have a look at a neat little tool called Digital Cinema Package Creator. That's a freeware which you can get from this web page here, terminal-entry.ee. So let's go ahead and create our DCP. First of all, we need to check the settings of the tool. And what you want to make sure is that the color mode sRGB to XYZ is not checked because we already uh, did the conversion to XYZ in Scratch, so this needs to be unchecked. And next we want to make sure to allow for J2K source files because that's what we are actually feeding this tool because we did the XYZ conversion in Scratch and also the JPEG 2000 encoding. So this means that the Digital Cinema Package Creator does not need to do any color transform or any encoding at all. It basically just needs to copy all of the JPEG 2000 files into one single MXF file and that's it. So 
Make sure the quality slider is at the highest level. Specify the number of threads depending on your CPU. I'm running a MacBook here, so just selecting four. Hit OK, and then let's create a 2D movie. Now simply go to the folder that contains the JPEG 2000 sequence from scratch. Here we are. Next, select the correct frame rate. And now we need to specify the range of our image sequence that we want to play back. So if I switch back to scratch, I can see I have 3149 frames. So we're starting at frame 0, going to 1, 3, 4, 8. Next, we're going to load our audio file that corresponds to the video. Here we are. Same goes for the audio from 0 to 1348. Give that package a name. And it's called uh, whatever, trailer ECP. Movie name is Lumberjack Games Trailer. And the creator is me, actually. Kind of movie, it's a trailer. And I'll simply select the output folder where you want to create the DCP and hit the start button. As you can see, DCP Creator instantly jumps to video wrapping and that is really the big advantage of our workflow here because Scratch is able to do the XYZ transformation and also rendering DCI compliant JPEG 2000 files. So there's no further transcoding or conversion or whatsoever needed and the DCP Creator only needs to rewrap the JPEG 2000 files into an MXF file. Okay, DCP Creator is done with creating our DCP. So let's have a look at the resulting files in the output folder. And this is where the DCP Creator created a folder called DCP. Let's quickly rename that to Longjack Trailer. And inside there we have our audio MXF and the video MXF and also the corresponding metadata files that tell the cinema server uh, what's inside the DCP. So this concludes the Scratch tutorial about creating a DCP from the content inside Scratch. Hope it was useful to you and see you next time. Bye!